Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, depending on when you are viewing this video. This PowerPoint presentation is on content in Chapter 3, Health Promotion Theories. The objectives are to compare and contrast nursing and non-nursing health promotion theories, examine health promotion theories for consistency with accepted health promotion priorities and values, articulating how health promotion theories move the profession forward, discussing strengths and limitations associated with each health promotion theory or model, describing the difference between a model and a theory, identifying theoretical assumptions and concepts within nursing and non-nursing theories, and finally, to develop your own health promotion model. Let's consider the question, why should health promotion be theory-based? Theories provide a roadmap and step-by-step -step summary of factors to consider in the design, implementation, and evaluation of a health promotion program. Multiple theories may be needed as the field of health promotion has become far too complex for one theory to guide education, practice, and research. We first turn our attention to behavioral change theories. <clears throat> we want to understand that behavioral change theories attempt to explain why people do or do not adopt certain health behaviors. Self-efficacy and motivation are often common elements in behavioral change theories, and examples of behavioral change theories include the health belief model, the theory of reasoned action, and the protection motivation theory. Overall model of protection motivation theory as a visual example for you in terms of how to conceptualize theories would be to examine the health protection motivation theory. Sources of information begin the process and include environmental sources including verbal persuasion and observational learning. Interpersonal components include personality variable, variables and prior experience. Next comes the cognitive mediating processes. This includes the threat appraisal, which includes evaluation of maladaptive response, which can lead to protection motivation, as well as coping appraisal, which includes the evaluation of an adaptive response. And finally, these can lead to coping modes that include adaptive coping or maladaptive coping. So a subcomponent here in the protection motivation theory is the protection motivation theory proposition that people protect themselves based on four factors. Their perceived severity of a threatened event, such as a car accident or the development of coronary artery disease, the perceived probability of the occurrence or the individual's vulnerability, for example, I may be more vulnerable because I have a family history of coronary artery disease, and then the efficacy of a recommended preventive behavior. How efficacious is the recommended behavior? Maybe a lifestyle modification, for example. And then the perceived self-efficacy. How confident do I feel about my ability to follow through with the recommended preventive behavior? So this protection motivation theory has been tested and evaluated in a number of research studies, most helpful of which is the meta-analyses of research on protection motivation theory published in the Journal of Applied Social Psychology. Now while this is somewhat dated, the meta-analyses reviewed the protection motivation theory as it applied to a number of health problems and health promotion issues. These included cancer prevention, exercise, diet, healthy lifestyle, smoking, AIDS prevention, alcohol consumption, and adherence to medical treatment regimes. So we find that in the literature the health protection motivation theory is used frequently and demonstrates efficacy. 
Continuing on with behavioral change theories, we look at other ex examples including the theory of planned behavior, the social cognitive theory, self-determination theory, the trans theoretical model or stages of change model, and the precaution adoption process model. Note that some of these are models while others of them are theories. And then the primary socialization theory. Intervention-based models are focusing on health policy, health education, and can focus on individual interventions as well. All of these are designed to promote health. Examples of these include the Tannehill model and the behavioral change wheel. Next we turn our attention to ecological theories and models and these include that the state of health is an interaction between the person and his or her ecosystem including families, communities, cultures, and the physical environment. Examples of ecological theories and models include the social ecological model, the salutogenic theory, the life course health development model. Next we look at planning models and these include a design for use in community-based settings not for use with individual clients. But these planning models are useful in guiding community needs assessments, the planning phase, the implementation phase, and the evaluation phase. Examples of planning models include the stage planning model for health education, health promotion activity. And then we turn our attention to communication theories. And your text gives the example of the Ottawa Declaration from the World Health Organization, which stressed the need for a reorientation of healthcare services. Communication theories that contributed to such reorientation included the diffusion of innovations theory and Weeks health communication theory. So let's take a moment to look at the diffusion of innovations theory just to give you an idea about the concepts and ideas that are gathered together in this theory. The key elements include innovation, which might be a new preventive strategy or a new health promotion strategy, uh, the adopters, who adopts early, who adopts later, the communication channels that are available once the innovation is published, and then the timeline. How long does it take from the innovation being developed until it's adopted and then adopted by more people? and also the social system within which we are talking about the innovation being adopted. Next we look at the stages of the adoption process which includes knowledge, persuasion, decision making including the three components which are is the decision optional at the individual level, is the decision collective having to do with all participants such as a community or is the decision authoritative in that the decision is made by persons in a position of power and then the implementation phase where the adoption is started to be implemented and then finally the confirmation stage where there is ongoing implementation so the diffusion of innovations theory has the five stages we've just discussed and often it's helpful to look at a model from a visual perspective to understand how these things are interconnected. Turning our attention back to the Ottawa Declaration, we look at the responsibility for health promotion being in the health services shared among individuals, community groups, health professions, and health service institutions and governments. The Ottawa Declaration also said that all parties need to work towards a health care system which contributes to the pursuit of health. The role of the health sector must move increasingly in a health promotion direction beyond its responsibility for providing traditional clinical and curative services. 
Health professionals need to be sensitive and respectful of cultural needs in health promotion. And the, a stronger attention needs to be paid to health research as well as changes in professional education and training in order for us to move forward with health promotion. This must lead to a change of attitude and organization of health services which refocuses on the total needs of the individual as a whole person. So health promotion was further defined by the first international conference on health promotion in Ottawa as the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health, to reach a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. An individual or group must be able to identify and to realize aspirations, to satisfy needs, and to change or cope with the environment they are involved in. Health is therefore seen as a resource for everyday life, not the objective of living. Health is a positive concept emphasizing social and personal resources as well as physical capacities. Therefore, health promotion is not just the responsibility of the health sector, but goes beyond healthy lifestyles to well-being. You see the shift in the focus there. The prerequisites for health as defined by the conference include fundamental conditions and resources for health, which include peace, shelter, education, food, adequate income, a stable ecosystem, sustainable resources, social justice, and equity. All of these should be ringing true to you in terms of what nursing values are. Improvement in health requires a secure foundation in these ba basic prerequisites. So finally, we turn our attention to evaluation models, which are helpful to researchers in measuring the eff effectiveness of a health promotion program. These are also helpful to practitioners who are designing and implementing interventions. Examples of evaluation models include the precede proceed model and the re-aim framework. Finally, nursing models and theories, of which there are many and you are familiar with at least some of them, starting with Nightingale's environmental theory, Abdella's theory, Orlando's theory, Virginia Henderson's principles and practice of nursing, Myra Levin's conservation model, the transcultural care theory, Roy's adaptation model, Dorothy Johnson's behavioral systems model, and the list goes on. Goal attainment theory, Pender's health promotion model, Betty Newman's model, etc. So clearly there are many nursing models which have incorporated some pieces of other health promotion models or at least other concepts from other health promotion models and theories. Finally we ask the question how are theories constructed and what is the process of theory construction? It starts with identifying concepts that influence health promotion by reviewing literature or conducting research, clustering related terms or concepts and eliminating any redundancy or overlap, simultaneously considering whether there are any opposing or contradictory ideas within the concepts identified, and then skip, sketching a picture, diagram, or flow chart or concept map to uh, help identify the linkages between the concepts in the model. Listing the assumptions that a person must believe in order to agree with the model and publishing the model and design and conducting research studies to test it to discover if it is indeed valid. An example of this is the momentum theory which is discussed further in your text. So in summary, theories help in designing, implementing, and evaluating a health promotion program. And types of theories include behavioral, intervention-based, excuse me, ecological, planning, communication, evaluation, and nursing theories. An example of theory construction is the momentum theory developed by your text's author and further just Thank you for viewing this video on theories in health promotion. I hope that you have enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you online and in class.